All right. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Von Reeden with cgcookie.com, and I'm going to be doing a live stream today on brushes and how to use them effectively, how to create them, and then how to save them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of some of these softwares. I'll do a final marketing push, <clears throat> and then I will get started. So like I said, I'm going to be using Photoshop to create these uh, brushes, and I'm going to be taking some of the considerations uh, that you guys have been telling me on our Facebook page on what brushes to create. I want to do a huge uh, brush post soon, which will include all the ones that you can download. So I wanted to do as many as possible before the post so that uh, it's kind of a large collection of brushes that you can have at your disposal. And as always, I will keep the question app open and on the side so that you can see and ask any questions during the stream. And it doesn't have to be related to the actual topic, but if you guys have any questions for me about digital art or concept art, whatever it may be, feel free to ask and I will get back to you. And as I finish up here, I'll switch to my canvas that I'm creating right now. Okay, and as always, we do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m., and that's Central Time in America, and outside of the States, that's minus 6 GMT. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to share my desktop so you guys can see all the actions and what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side there. And I'm going to minimize everything else so this is as clean as possible for you guys to see. So I'm going to move the layers to the side. All these other boxes that I don't even really use. I usually only keep my brush panel open, my layers, and my swatches. And I would go full screen, but I want to be able to see the questions that you guys may have along the way. So I'm going to put it open right about here. OK. So in Photoshop, you have your basic brushes and brushes that come with the software. And to change that, all you have to do is you go to your Brushes tab on the top. So it's that sub-menu underneath that top menu. Click the little down arrow. And these are all the brushes that I have available to me currently. And I do have some more that I have on Concept Cookie as well. but. For some reason, these are the ones that are available to me now, and I should download all of them. Now, when I go into here, there we go, make new layers for each of these. So pretty much, I tend to use the Circle Hard Edge Brush, the Circle Soft Edge Brush, and the Chalk Brush for almost anything and everything. And I, um, and I do recommend that you don't need fancy brushes, and I'm a big proponent of that, and that sometimes you get carried away with all these different brushes that you lose sight of the fact that you don't need them to create something amazing. But they do help in starting out with a base or creating structure for you to work on top of. So even some of these chaos brushes that we have here that you can download as well, you can create like quick, messy, organized, disorganized uh, structures that you can feed off of and kind of play with the different shapes. And the purpose of brushes that are so um, chaotic are they help break up the monotony of a blank background right away. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. And a lot of people also enjoy using textured brushes. Now this is something I do enjoy. So especially if I'm working on any character that has a metal texture or something with uh, rust or even just a little bit of uh, texture to add to the surface, I usually go for one of the metal brushes. So you can see something like that. And I think the biggest trend right now is people use a lot of painterly brushes. And those we ha only have a couple of, but these are the ones that I want to be adding to the new brush update. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that. So right now we have the chalk brush, which is one that has a little bit of texture and it has kind of that breakup of space that gives it that chalk look. And it's really nice for blending and uh, probably is my number three brush that I use at all times. 
So it's usually the circle hard edge brush as my number one, soft edge is two, and then this chalk one is three. Now there are times when you'll have like months or periods where you'll tend to favor one brush over another. There was a good three months where I was only using this brush, which is more of like the painterly brush that I was talking about, and it has a stroke to it. So it's as if the bristles of a brush were adding into were added into consideration when making the brush. So you can create some nice wispy effects on the ends, and this is a great one for blending as well. Now, while I was in school, admittedly, I had a skin brush that I used for everything. And this is the exact same one that I had in school, and this is what it looks like. And the reason I loved it so much is because it's like the chalk brush, and it has a texture, but this one has such a great texture to it that it blends so well. So I tend to use this not as much anymore, mostly because it has so much texture that it can be a little... Um, detailed when I when maybe I'm not going for a detailed look right away but this is another great brush to use and I will be going through how to create something that has more of a texture to it and then lastly let's see what other brushes I have in here to go through uh, sh angular and shapular shape brushes seem to be a big thing as well right now so if I grab take my triangle brush this one's great for like you're trying to get in edges and I see a lot of people work in this a lot of professional artists where they find more angular brushes to be more helpful than uh, the circle brushes to start off. <laughs> and admittedly, I can say I haven't used them that much, but from when I have used them to test them, <laughs> sorry, I got caught. Uh, when I have used them, I found them very effective uh, for erasing, especially when I'm trying to cut in certain edges. So that is definitely something to consider as well that not only are these brushes you can be used as brushes, but you should be thinking that these brushes can be also doubled as erasers. So that's definitely something to keep in mind as we go through this. And I don't know why I'm drawing a face. It's like my go-to for uh, what I like to draw. And uh, usually when I create a brush, I always test them out. So if you download a brush from Concept Cookie, you'll know that I've tested them out. I feel comfortable using them. And there are, have been multiple times where I don't like the brush right away, so I'll have to recreate it and adjust settings until I get it to a point where I feel comfortable using the brush. Because if I give you a brush that even I'm not comfortable using, I feel like I'm giving you a false product, you know? So that's something that I like to do with all the brushes on, that are available on Concept Cookie. All right, so then that would be an angular brush. And then you have very specific brushes, like chain brushes. So we have like the chain links, and these I don't use unless if I'm going for a particular look. So if, if I'm needing chain links in my piece, then I'll use the brush. But besides that, I don't really use it that much. And then lastly, I'm going to show you, so these are the male brushes that we have available. And what these are great for, let's say you're starting out um, a turnaround and you need quick uh, kind of guides to draw over. These are great because then you can just plop these down. And if I was working on a bigger canvas, I wouldn't even resize them. I would just put them down and go from there. So what's great about this is then you don't have to worry about anatomy or proportion so much. You just have to focus on the additional layers and clothing and fabric and whatever you're adding to this character on top of it. And this is a pretty standard male silhouette. But then what we also have are these outlines of the male form. So you can see as I prop that down, it looks like a pretty much a sketching of the entire male form. And why these are great is if you're doing more sketching on top of it where you're not really blocking out shapes for a silhouette, you're going more into detailing stuff, or maybe you just want a reference on the side, these are great to just plop down on the side of your canvas and work from there. So these are also available to download on the brushes page of uh, Concept Cookie. I'm going to go ahead and undo those. So and that's a quick rundown of the brushes we have to offer and uh, the ones I like to use. But let's go ahead and start creating brushes. So I'm going to go ahead, make this a bit smaller. And before I go, uh, someone said, it's my birthday and I am watching you. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you very much. I hope uh, I do do well. <laughs> and uh, happy birthday. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this image size to be in pixels. So I don't want it to be outrageously large, like 3,000, because all the brushes that I saved out are at a 250 by 250 pixel. So I'm going to go ahead and just change this to, oh, not 250. I want to change it to 500, so that way I can work in the space, and then I can resize it if I feel it's necessary. All right, so what we can do is let's go ahead and make a new brush. So what kind of a brush would you guys like to see? And I know that there's a little bit of a lag, so I'll kind of wait to hear what you guys want to see, because then these brushes will be added to the brush set that will be added soon on Concept Cookie. And you know what? Actually, one of the first ones I can create that was requested on our Facebook page is a scale brush. And this would be used for like creatures or something where you want kind of that repeated pattern. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm going to change the image size to uh, inches. I'm going to change it to 5 inches, which is, I believe, a 1500 by 1500 pixel. And then I'll go ahead and save them out smaller. Because I like to work larger, get the detail in, and then I like to save them out smaller so then when you're working, they're much more effective. OK, so pretty much with a scale, we're going to get a repeated pattern. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to imagine that this is going to be repeated over and over again. So let's go ahead, draw half of it. I'm just doing kind of the standard uh, square angle scale here. So I'm just going to select it all, paste it. And I'm doing these on new layers. So don't do it on your background layer. I find it's much easier to save them if you do it on a separate layer. So I'm going to merge those together. Let's make it a little smaller, something like that. OK, so now what I can do is either single it, save it as a singular scale, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do kind of like three scales. And the reason for this, so that when we lay it down, it'll be a repeated pattern wherever our brush stroke goes. All right, so let's see if this works. So to do this, I'm going to select all. Or first, I'm going to make sure all of the layers are combined into one that we've worked on. So you can see my layer 4 is the scale, scale layer. I'm going to do Command-A, which selects all. Go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and then just save it as whatever for now. And then you can see how my brush changes to that scale. Now, right away, if we start using it, it won't be that effective. And let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So we get kind of this uh, repeated effect, but it doesn't really follow in the direction, and it's kind of more of just a jumble. So what we have to do is adjust the brush settings. So that's why this is so important. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bigger. So on my brush menu settings here, and I hope you guys can see this. Hopefully it's not too small. Let me check here. It's a little small, but I think you'll be able to see it. So I'm going to make it a little bigger. So you can see the spacing is really close. So what I need to do is make it larger. So I'm going to go ahead, change the spacing on it. You can see how that looks a lot better for what I'm going for. Make it a little smaller. So it's a lot of testing, like doing your brushes and then testing them out, seeing if they are effective. And there we go. So once you kind of test it enough, you'll be able to see, OK, that's the spacing I want. But as you can see, if we go left and right, we still don't get that pattern that we want when we go perfectly vertical. So when we go vertical, it gives us that perfect scale look that we're going for. But when we go in other directions, it kind of loses the effect. So what you want to do is you want to go to your shape dynamics, and you don't want to turn your diameter. Well, I, you can turn your minimum diameter up or down, but I'm going to keep it all the way up. 
I don't want any jitter on. Or you no, know, I want the jitter on, but it's on off for control. I'm going to click that, which will bring up this little menu here, and I want to do direction. And what that will do is it will angle it in the direction that my pen is going in. But I have to turn the jitter percentage to zero, but the control be at direction. So let me make this smaller. And it's still giving me some jitter. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so if you do your initial direction, it kind of depends on the way that you angle your brush on the actual canvas, but I'm going to go ahead and set mine to direction so that it kind of follows the brush. And you can get some cool effects from that. Now, I would probably do some more editing to make it perfect that when you go in other directions, you'll get the look that you're going for. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and save this brush out. And I'm also going to turn on transfer as well. And that is so that when you press down harder, you'll get more of a scale effect. But then the lighter you press, it'll be lighter. So you can see I'm barely pressing down when I start. And as I go, it gets darker when I press down harder. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this brush out. So now to do that, I'm going to go to my brush drop down menu on the top left. And I'm going to change my size of the brush to 250, because I save all my brushes out at 250, so that when I grab it, I know it's at the right size for me to get started on, as all my other brushes. And then you're going to click the little post-it note in the top right of this menu. So now I would save it as Coco Scale Brush, or whatever you want to call your brushes that you make. Choose OK. And there we go. So now we have it saved out, and it has all the settings that we were just editing in the brush menu as well. And that's very important because you can't just save out or you can't just define your brush preset and think that you'll have all the brush editing that you did in your brush menu saved. So you got to save it in the actual brush menu as well. So someone's saying, are you working on a Cintiq or a standard tablet? So right now I'm currently working on my Intuos 3 or 4, my Intuos 4 tablet. And now someone's asking for a diamond texture brush. So that one's a little different. So I guess I could go and Google diamond. And this is how I normally go about creating very specific brushes, is I'll go to Google Images, see how it's created. So then you can see some of these like drawing ones. And then I'll try to recreate that in Photoshop the best I can. I'm going to go ahead and make that smaller so I can see it in the corner. OK, so with this diamond that we want to create, a diamond has a lot of jaggy edges, and it has uh, a lot of different cuts in it, which give it the reflection from the light that's hitting it, and it gives it that really cool look. So to give it that effect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be choosing my polygonal lasso tool, and I'm just going to kind of have at it where I'm going to be creating different shapes. I'm going to be taking away shapes as well inside of here. So while this is selected, I'm going to hold Option on a Mac, and I believe it's Alt on a PC, and I'm going to cut into it without really too much rhyme or reason. But what I'm looking for is a lot of jagged edges to cut in and out of this diamond. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but it'll make sense once I finish the, the actual cut. So then I'm going to connect it to that initial point that I have. You can see how we have a selected weird uh, looking triangu triangular shapes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool, make a new layer. I'm going to fill in those triangles. And then I'm going to deselect them. So now we got sort of these triangular floating in space brush that we could work with. So I'm going to go ahead, make it a little bigger. And let's define this brush and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go edit, define brush preset again. 
choose OK for now because we want to edit it still. You can see how my brush changes to this weird triangular brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my transfer so that the harder I push, push down, the darker the opacity will be. Then I'm going to turn on scattering for this one so that we get more of that random effect that the diamond look kind of has. So you can see how crazy we can really get it. And we're also going to turn on our shape dynamics. Get some angle jitter in there, some roundness jitter, size jitter. And a lot of this is just playing with the brush menu and then figuring out uh, what works and what doesn't work. So like as I lay this down, I can see my scatter is a bit too high. So I'm going to turn it down. So it's more collective in the actual area of where I'm putting the brush down. All right, so now with this brush, I'm going to go ahead and save it. But let's go ahead and test it. So this is another good example of even when you create your brushes, you want to make sure that they are working for you. You don't want to just create a whole bunch of random brushes and not test them and see if they work for you. So what I would probably do is first give it a base color to work with. I'll make my brush larger to give it more of that look. And what I would probably do is grab some of my hard edge brushes, so maybe not even my circle brush, maybe even a flattened one. Or actually, let's go with the triangular brush. Then cut it at different areas. Let's say we grab my eraser tool, go back to that diamond brush that we just created. Make it pretty big. And you can just start playing with it and see like what works and what's not working. So a lot of the times when I create a brush, sometimes I'll solely use it just for using it as an eraser, which is kind of a different way to look at brushes as well. So even with this diamond, I'm using it more, or the brush itself, more as an eraser where I seem to be getting the flat color that I want with one of my flattened brushes, and then I'll use the eraser to get that detail in. So then from here, I would probably go in and like give some more lines to indicate where the cuts are. I don't know why I did a dark one right there. I'd probably make it lighter. Something like that. And then work with it from there. So this is definitely, this is looking all right. Like I could definitely tweak it a bit more to give it that diamond look. Probably not as many jagged edges and make them a little smaller. But this is one way you could go ahead and make a diamond brush. So we can go ahead and hide those layers. Now someone's asking, can it be useful to make your brushes bigger than what you are currently doing, or if generally it goes well like this. So there is a certain size that you can't save something out as. So let me go ahead and test that. Because you have to keep it within a certain amount of pixels to save them. So if I tried like 15 inches each, which is, let me see how many pixels that is. It's 4,500 by 4,500. Let's say we wanted to create a little brush. Oops. All right, so there's my smiley face. I want to save this as a brush for no particular reason. I'm going to go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, choose OK. And as I try to save it, so it looks like this does work, so I can save it up to this. But if I go larger than 5,000, that's the limit. 
So if you go larger than 5,000, you won't be able to save it. So let me, let me test that to make sure I'm right, because otherwise I don't want to be telling you guys something that won't work, if it will work. So I'm changing it to 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. So that's well above the 5,000 limit. So let's see if that works. Make sure my brush covers most of the canvas here. So now I'm going to go to Edit. Well, first I'm going to select it all, because that's the first step. Select all, edit, define brush preset, and it's grayed out. So we cannot save this brush out. So you can make large brushes, but you can you have to keep them below the 5,000 pixel limit. And I believe that's in CS6, because I, I remember in CS5, I think it was a bit smaller that you could save them out as. But if you're working with Photoshop CS6, then that's the largest you can go. So I'm going to hide this, and actually I'm going to go back to my first canvas. Okay, so now if I go back to the Facebook page, I believe there was another one that I wanted to create. Okay, so a leather brush. That's a good one. So what I would probably do for things that are so specific in a texture or material is I would probably take a picture of the material, bring it into Photoshop, and then edit it to make it into a brush. And it's really easy, and we have a tutorial on that on Concept Cookie. So if maybe that's something that interests you, you can go ahead and check that one out. But I'm going to go ahead and do my best to create it without a leather texture. So in this case, I'm thinking, okay, Leather has that dried, overly dried skin appearance. So it definitely has some texture to it. So let's go ahead and grab kind of my go-to texture brush is this metal brush. I'm going to be using a combination of the metal brush and I believe the skin brush to give us uh, the leather look. So I want to be painting in black because it's easiest for Photoshop to recognize the brushes that you're saving out if you use black. So I'm going to go ahead, make a pretty large brush, make sure it has some edging to it, but I'm also making sure that if it is reaching the edge of the canvas, I have to erase it because otherwise your brush is going to have um, an edge to the actual cut. And you don't want that, especially if you want something that blends nice. It won't blend nice if you have this really harsh edge of white on one side. So I'm going to go ahead and using my eraser brush, but I'm using my eraser as this uh, metal brush that we have to make sure that I'm not giving it a weird edge as I erase it. Okay, so the thing about leather is it usually has some kind of a skin look, so there's wrinkles to it. So if I just type in leather once again to Google Images, and I sometimes use either DeviantArt, even Pinterest, any kind of reference site that works for you, go ahead and use it. But do not just grab an image from Google Image, drag it into Photoshop, and then paint over, because you might get in trouble for that. But instead, I like to use it as reference, look at it, and then kind of try to recreate it in Photoshop. So the one that I'm going to be looking at, something like this, where it has all these kind of different wrinkle skin cuts in it. So get this look. I'm going to go back into Photoshop. I'm going to make a copy of this just in case I don't like the way it looks. And choosing my eraser brush, I'm going to make it really small. I'm just going to go ahead and cut into it. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to recreate that same wrinkle pattern that is in this reference image. So sometimes brushes can take a while to make, and this is what usually discourages people from creating their own. They'll usually look on DeviantArt or something to find brushes that professionals use or they'll hand out. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because I know I've done it many times before, but you definitely have more of a connection to the brushes that you make, and you'll feel more confident in being able to edit them, or if you need a specific brush that maybe your brush pack doesn't have, and you need to create it on the fly, so on the go if you have a client or if there's something that you need done quickly, you'll feel confident being able to be like, okay, I know how to make this brush and the steps to go about doing that.
So if you can just bear with me as I finish the skin uh, detailing on our leather brush here. And something that I'm going to do at the end of the stream is I'm going to show you guys what I got at this convention this past weekend because Concept Cookie had its own booth at C2E2 in Chicago and there were a, a bunch of artists that I got to meet. Uh, two of them I've been following for many, many years. So it was really cool to be able to meet them in person, have them sign a few of their prints, and I'll kind of show you what I got. Or if there's a city or even a country that you want us to come to and visit and maybe do a booth at a local convention or even talk at a schooling event, this is something we like to do because we like meeting people in person, talking to them and helping them any way we can. Because our job is to help teach, and if we're not doing that, we're not doing our job. So I'm definitely open to traveling and hearing where you guys would like to see Concept Cookie. So if I was working even faster than this, I would probably go much quicker with my brush strokes and how I'm cutting into it. But since I want to make this look really nice and maybe even have this be one of the brushes available to download, that's why I'm taking my time and going a little bit at a slower pace. Now the inside is a bit too dark for me as well, so I'm going to make my brush size a lot bigger. Just lightly graze it over the center. like that. So you can see how it's not so contrasty anymore. So there we go. So now we have our leather brush ready for testing. So if you can remember the steps, we have to select all, making sure that we're on the layer that we just created this on. Select all with Command A. Go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Choose OK. And then see how my brush changed from what it is. And then I'm going to go ahead, hide that layer, make a new layer. Let's test it. So initially, it's going to be a pretty blackened blob. So we want to change that. So I want to turn on my transfer. So the harder I push down, the more solid of a base it will be. But I'm also going to turn up my spacing. Because right now, we lose a lot of those wrinkles that we created during the brush phase. So I want to go ahead and keep that. So to do it, i got to turn up my spacing. So we're getting there. So you can kind of see how you have to keep testing it. And eventually you should get it to a point that it'll be the brush that you wanted to create. Oh, and I don't like that. So a lot of the times, like even if I turn on like texture, you'll see the different effects that that will give. And actually that has a really cool look to it. I might even say that, save that. Um, someone's asking, who exactly is or are behind Concept Cookie? So the way that I like to explain Concept Cookie is CG Cookie is the parent company, and Concept Cookie is one of the children. So like Blender Cookie is the first one and most well-known one, and that's ran by Jonathan Williamson, but CG Cookie is run by Wes Burke, and he's like the head of it. So he's like the cookie chef. And then each of us that run the sub sites are usually uh, one person. So like Concept Cookie is just run by me and I have people that I reach out to for like authors or interviews or whatever but every post and every marketing that you see that's all one person. So we're not that big of a company. I think sometimes people get the misconception that we're much bigger but really Concept Cookie is only uh, one person doing all the the site work. But then we also have, you know, people working on Sculpt Cookie, Max Cookie, 
and then two people on Blender, and then a programmer and a web. We have a we have a few miscellaneous people working on CG Cookie, but yeah, for Concept Cookie, it's just me. And recently, we have gotten Pavla from uh, across the water, and she does a lot of the contacting of our AAA authors. And that's actually something that I'm really excited to share with you because we have a really big summer plan planned. And if you're a citizen member, you're definitely going to benefit from it. And it's going to be like a weekly benefit. So definitely look forward to that. And I'm also looking to get an intern soon. So hopefully hopefully we'll get more going on Concept Cookie once we get more people working on the site. So I hope that answers the question. OK, so then this is my leather brush. And after the stream, I'm going to tweak it a little more so you can definitely see the lines more. But I wanted to create at least one more before I end off the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and just save it out for now. And <laughs> I forgot I have the smiley face saved. And it's kind of funny because uh, one of the brushes that, you know what, I'm going to download it really quick from our site. Do, do, do is a head profile. And you might be wondering, OK, well, what would you use that for? Let me show you. So I believe it's under male brushes. Oh, no, I took it down. That's right, because I wanted to add more. So let's say that you had a really awesome profile of a head. So I'm going to do this really quickly, but let's say let's say I try to create the best head profile under pressure. And the reason that stuff like this can be helpful is because it gives you proportion and sizing right away. Or that way you don't have to focus on that, but rather just focus on the content that you want to put on top of the head. OK, so without getting too detailed, I'm going to stop myself. OK, so let's say you want to save this out so that you can use it for future uses. If you're drawing characters from the side view or something like that, what you would do is, well, first I would center it, something around there. Select all, edit to find brush preset, save. And then as I go to my brushes, now whenever you need a profile, you can go ahead and change the size to however big you need it and lay it down. And the reason that this is so helpful if you're doing like comic book stuff or you're in a field where you have to do a lot of repetitious work, so you're drawing a lot of the same thing over and over, well, if you have a character and you want their proportions captured really quickly, this is a great way where you can just draw out heads at different angles or different faces even and then use them as brushes where literally then you're just stamping them down. So draw it nice once. Uh, Draw it really nice one time, and you'll be able to recycle it over and over. So this is a cool thing that you can do if you are doing stuff like that. So now the last thing that I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and create kind of a crazy brush. Because these are often the most fun to create. And I think once you do it once, you'll have fun creating brushes. So I definitely recommend this. Go ahead and make a new layer. So let's go ahead, without really any rhyme or reason, just kind of go where feel, it feels natural for your hand to keep going in that the movement. And you'll see why something like this can be so effective. And a lot of artists do this where they'll work with chaos. One of my good friends, Puichi, he does beautiful work, and a lot of the times he tries to create a chaos and he organizes it. So it's a technique that is very interesting because you want to lay out a bunch of brush strokes that give a meaning or a, evoke an emotion. And then you try to organize it to create the shapes and forms and patterns to give story and life to the different subject matters in the piece. 
So even with this, I'm not going for anything specific. I'm not trying to create something um, shapular or have form. So bam. So this is our weird, ugly little doodle we got going on here. So now let's say we test this one out. Select all, Command A, Edit, Define Brush Preset, choose OK, hide that layer, make a new one. And now with this brush, you can see what we got going on here without editing the brush settings. So it's definitely this very creepy looking weird nonsense that we want to kind of manipulate. So let's turn on our shape dynamics. Let's go crazy with an angle jitter. You can see what an effect this will give. So you see how cool that can look? So it almost looks like a crazy fur texture. And actually, I really like this brush. I'm going to go ahead and save this one out. Where this almost looks like, uh, if you guys know what Jim Henson, uh, his creature shop is, and the way that that fur has that very organic look to it, this is what this brush could be. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm going to save this before I edit it anymore, because I really like the way that this brush lays out. And let's go ahead and turn on, I don't want texture, let's turn on some scatter. Turn the count up a little bit. And that looks awesome. This is actually a really great fur brush on things that are heavily furred. And if I'm almost thinking like where the wild things are, uh, like Carol. So if I can imagine what they look like from memory. Um, it would look something like this. Then on areas that I would want erased. Actually, why not just do the whole thing with this brush? So usually if I do an erase like that, then I'm going to choose my brush again and push it on the inside so it looks like the fur is overlapping. And if I make my brush size smaller, you can see the effect we get. Then I'll, I would probably turn on transfer so that the harder I push down on the tablet, the more of the effect we would get. Obviously, this is not a where the wild things are creature. It's kind of turned into a Eskimo bear type thing. And that's it. So that's kind of my way of creating brushes. I hope you guys feel confident that you can create your own, especially if you need something very specific. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out. And I'm going to show you guys really quickly the things I got at the convention. And then I'm going to go ahead and end off the stream. OK, so we're back on the screen. I hope you guys can see this all right. So like I said earlier, I got to meet three different artists that uh, it was really kind of an honor. So the first two, or the, I guess the first one that I didn't know before I went there, his name is Corey Godby. Let me make sure that you guys can see this all right. So this is, I mean, for me, I really like organic work. So for me, this was like, like stunning. And the coolest part, of course, I get a phone call during the stream. I promise you, I'm never this popular with phone calls. Uh, so the cool thing about him was he even did a little doodle when I bought it, so he signed it, which was really awesome. So he's definitely an artist that I I appreciated meeting. And he was such a cool, nice guy. And he even had these little sketchbooks that were like full of like just sketches of what he's done. And it was really cool. He was a nice, awesome guy. Gave me some tips on like where to get this printed and how much. So I'm going to put these descriptions somewhere on somewhere so you guys can check them out if you want to as well, these artists. But yeah, Corey Godby, definitely one to check out. Great organic work, and he has really lovely color work as well. And then, let's see here. 
The second artist I meet, met was someone that I had been following for a long time, and then it wasn't even until after I graduated that I found out he actually went to the same school that I did. So his name is Pierre Morbacher, and he does absolutely stunning like color work and composition, and he really pays attention to the way that he focuses uh, different colors. So for this one, this is one of the ones that started making me like red more, and I know that there's a glare coming from my window, but his arms in the picture are this really intense red, and I thought that was so bold and strong. So Peter was really cool. He also signed it for me, and it was definitely a pleasure meeting him. And then lastly, the last thing I have to show you guys is I've been reading this Alice, or not Alice, uh, Wizard of Oz book series for a while. So I don't, I'm, honestly, I'm not, admittedly, I'm not that big of a comic book person, but these are these books that I love because of the artists, where they're very quick, sketchy, like, um, almost, it looks like it's done in pen, but it's actually done, I believe all of them are done in pencil first, and then he brings it into Photoshop and colors them. So the entire books are colored as well. And they are just incredible. So when I went to the show, I found out that this artist was actually there. So I went ahead, found his booth, bought the very latest version of the book, which is Emerald City of Oz, and he also signed it. So I was really happy. Like It was this unexpected surprise to meet a lot of these artists, especially ones that I've known for so long. So that was really cool. And then lastly, I don't know if any of you watched Face Off, but the winner of Season 4, Anthony, was there, so I got to meet him. Another super cool guy. And I think it's just really humbling to meet artists because you realize they're just people. And oftentimes artists are the ones that were shy growing up or the ones that sometimes were picked on. So when you talk to them, they're really honest with you and they're just genuinely nice people. So that was my C2E2 experience. If you guys are in the Chicago area, I will be at Anime Central, which is another big convention, in three weeks. And then I'll be at Spectrum, which is in Kansas City, Missouri, in two week weekends. So next Friday I'm leaving. So, yeah, I think that's all the news I got to share with you guys. Thanks again for coming to this Concept Cookie live stream. We do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time and minus 6 GMT. So hopefully we'll see you next week. And, oh, actually, actually... Next week in the month of May, I'm going to do a stream covering the same topic every week, but it's going to be on creating a character. So every Wednesday, I'll pick off where the last one left off, and hopefully by the end of May, we'll have a really awesome character that we created. So thanks again for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.